So my trusty rental car and I have reached the final stop on our Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky tour here. We are at the Abraham Lincoln Birthplace National Historic Site. Let's go check it out. So let me give you a quick rundown of what I learned from the video inside the information center. So Thomas and Nancy Lincoln, their second child was Abraham Lincoln. He has an older sister named Sarah. And this was Sinking Spring Farm. Uh, Thomas Lincoln was a furniture maker, woodworker, who lived in Elizabethtown nearby. And they moved out here after Sarah was born. And this was where Abraham Lincoln was born. Now, my understanding is that between 1909 and 1911, they built this memorial around the replica of Lincoln's log cabin. I be, and like I said, it's a scaled down replica. It's not the original cabin from Lincoln's birth. And I really feel like this is coming full circle when it comes to Abraham Lincoln. Uh, we previously have been to Washington, D.C., where, of course, the Lincoln Memorial is, and Ford's Theater. We didn't do the Ford's Theater tour, but, you know, we were there at the site of his assassination. We've been, of course, when we did Route 66, we went through Springfield, Illinois, and got to see the Lincoln Memorial there, where he's entombed, and a couple different spots, actually, where his body was entombed. And of course, Springfield being the capital of Illinois, you know, where he served as governor, Illinois lays, lame, lays claim to being the land of Lincoln, but his birthplace is here in Kentucky. The Lincolns only lived on this property for about a couple years when they were forced off due to a land dispute. And as the film mentioned, there were, you know, that was not uncommon in that era because surveys and things were not always the most accurate. So land disputes were pretty common. So they were forced off and moved to a place 15 miles or 15 minutes, I can't remember, from here called Knob Creek. And if we have time, we'll go visit that after this. But walking up the steps here to the birthplace memorial, you'll, if you're counting, you'll discover there's 56 steps here representing the 56 years of Lincoln's life. And it was Theodore Roosevelt who in 1909 laid the cornerstone for this memorial. But it was Taft who was here in 1911 for the original opening. And here we are inside the memorial building with the scaled down replica cabin. pretty dark in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see much. Don't know if there's much to see. So one of the nice things about traveling in the southern U.S. in the off-season like this is that places like this are still open. In Canada, it's like most of our things seem to shut down between Victoria Day and May and or I shouldn't say shut down. They're only open from like Victoria Day in May to Labor Day in September. So if you're not traveling in peak tourist season, you miss out on a lot. Whereas here, I can be here in the middle of January 2024 at the time of recording this. And I can still access this. I can still see it. And the nice thing is there's no crowds. Like I am the only one in here right now. All right, 
So let's go back outside and let's go check out why it's called Sinking Spring. So there's a picture of the sinking spring and it looks like we can go down and get ourselves a closer look at it. So there you go. So the spring was a, an important geological feature, uh, which probably is one of the main reasons why the farm was selected for this location, or I should say why the location was selected for the farm. And it was also a popular stopping point for people traveling the road here in Kentucky. So a lot of history tied up in that little spring down there. So the fella at the Lincoln birthplace uh, site suggested that we check out Knob Creek Farm. He said the facilities here are closed, but we're welcome to wander the grounds basically as long as you're out of here by dark. So let's go take a look. So like you can see, Lincoln lived here from 1811 to 1816, so basically from the ages of two through five. And if I thought the last site was uh, deserted and not very many people, we are literally the only ones here today. So this I did not know about. So Hattie Howell Howard actually uh, built this tavern her brother had built the Nancy Lincoln Inn next to the birthplace, which we saw earlier in the video. So she and her husband bought this in 1928 and opened a tavern here in 1933. And according to the sign, it will reopen again in the spring. So not everything in the U.S. is open through the off-season. I can kind of show you the inside there by looking through the window. One of young Abraham Lincoln's first chores was planting the pumpkin seeds in the rows between the corn. So he worked these very fields that we're looking out on. And the nice thing is this area has never really suffered from any sort of development. So the land here is pretty much the same. One last look at the back side of the tavern here. So from this spot, the Lincolns, I understand there was actually another land dispute with all the families living in this Knob Creek Valley. And so the Lincolns then set forth and moved up to Indiana. I'm setting forth and heading in a different direction. I have to get on a plane tomorrow and head to Florida for a business conference. So it's been great having these last three days to check out some historic sites and roadside attractions in Indiana and, and Illinois and here in Kentucky. I'm really glad I had you along with me because I'm missing my normal road trip companion. 
these trips are not nearly as much fun without Emily being here along the way. So it's been nice having you to talk with. I hope you've enjoyed this video series. I hope you will consider sticking around and subscribing if you haven't already. And uh, that is going to do it for me and my nameless little rental car. Usually we have some sort of nickname for our rental cars, but I couldn't come up with one on my own. So here from Kentucky, it's Dan O'Can saying I'll see you in the next video.